Hallelujah. That's what I want to minister on just a little bit tonight. Faith that will tear the roof off. Amen. It's what I want to talk about just for a few moments tonight. Father, I ask you tonight that you'd give me liberty to preach in the name of Jesus. God, pray God you'll anoint this vessel. Pray God that you be glorified here tonight. It's all in Jesus' name I pray. Mark, Gospel of Mark. The second chapter, the second chapter of the book of Mark. We've been talking a whole lot about love and what it means to walk in love and what it means to have a compassion. I wonder tonight, amen, if we ever really understand what real compassion is. If we understand, you might understand what mama love is. You might understand what daddy love is, might even grandpa love. But I wonder, do you really understand the love of God? I'm talking about the love of God tonight that will reach down into the muck, reach down into the mire, and pull them out. Do you know that God, uh, amen, still saves sodomites? Do you know that, amen? Do you know that God still saves sinners, amen? Have you give up on anybody is what I want to know. Have we came to a place as a church, amen, that we've given up on somebody and thinking that there's absolutely no hope, but I've come by to tell you tonight, in the name of Jesus, amen, as long as they're breathing, as long as there's still life in that vessel, there's hope, amen, we don't give up on nobody. What kind of soldier would you be if you left a man on the battlefield? I want to tell you, before I read this, I want to give you what the God gave me the other day. I've told this so many times. I told it last night when I preached over there in South Carolina. I want to tell it again tonight. I've done, you guys have done heard it, amen, but we need to hear it again, amen. I want to tell you where God's calling the church to walk in the time that we live. You know, I don't have the whole message, Cooney. I don't have the whole message, Mike. I don't have all of faith, amen. I just have a small measure. I just have a small part that God's given me for the time that we're living, amen. And so the part that God's given me in the time that I'm living that God's called me to do is to reach out, amen. In the days of head, God's looking for a ministry of re reconciliation. God's looking to restore some things and God's looking, amen, for the ones, amen, to the church. I, listen to this. I remembered something the other day as we were riding over in Tennessee. I have never, hadn't thought about this. It never crossed my mind until the day that it, it happened. I remember the day after God reminded me, but I had never in all of my life had I ever remembered this until the Holy Ghost brought it back. So I knew God was getting my attention. But as I was riding, I began to see years ago, I was about eight, nine years old, I run down to the bottom of the steps and I tripped and I fell in the basement on the concrete. And I absolutely felt like I had shattered my knees. I remembered the excruciating pain that shot through my whole body as I laid there and I screamed uncontrollably as any child would do. My mother was in the kitchen in those days and she ran down the steps and she reached and she grabbed me up and she cradled me in her arms and she wept with me and she cried with me until I was better, until the pain was all gone, until I could get back up and she walked with me and she held me and she held on to me and she loved me and she never once condemned me and she never once said why was you running down the steps she just held on to me and loved me until I could get up and walk again and God dealt with my soul and said this that is what I have called my mother church to do that whenever men or women have failed and I mean fell hard they fell so hard that they're hurting and they're in excruciating pain and you have no idea the shame that it's brought to the family and the things that's going on but God is looking looking tonight for the mother church and he's expecting you and I to reach out with the hand of love and help them up and just hold them and bear their burdens, amen, and take heed lest we fall, amen, but we take them and we nourish them, amen, and we hold them and we're to love them and we're to help them and to bear their burdens and cry and weep with them and help them to stand back up and restore them back to Jesus, amen. Can I tell you that it's not time to run them down? It's not time to push them in the ground. Amen. This Bible says love thinketh no evil. Amen. That's the one thing that'll never never fail. We'll never in a million years ever go wrong just loving somebody. Just loving somebody. I don't understand the God love. I can't understand it but by the Holy Ghost of God. 
how that God would take me out of the pits of hell. Do you understand tonight? I don't know about you, but I deserve hell, Mark. I deserved it. I deserved to spend an eternity in hell, amen. I brought nothing to the table when God saved me. I know exactly what I was when God saved me, amen. I know exactly what I am now. I know exactly the vast difference from where I was when He saved me and He pulled me out of the pit of hell. And I brought nothing to the table as far as my salvation was concerned. It was completely and totally a free gift from Jesus Christ and I realize that and it brings me low I believe God is doing something right now in the churches I believe God if you will he's leveling the playing field I believe God is reminding all of us that we're zeros and that every one of us are nothing but sinners, and we're saved by grace, period. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And it's only His goodness. It's only His mercy. It's only by His grace as we learn to walk. I listened to Brother Ray for years, and in many ways I got so sick of hearing it, but I thank God tonight for every message I heard on the grace of God. As my flesh would kick, amen. God, I'm telling you, there is only one way to walk in this thing. Do you know it is by uh, grace, by faith, that you walk in Jesus Christ and by faith alone, period. No ifs, ands, or buts about that. There will be faith and it's all by His grace. And we're learning, amen, to deal with individuals and deal with other people the same way that God dealt with us, amen. I, I, I was so shaken today by the time we got out of that hospital, me and the doctor and the nurse, we cried and wept, amen, amen, as it was going on as God was dealing, as the Holy Ghost of God was dealing with us in that thing as the canopy of grace began to come down in that room as we talked about how we deal with someone that keeps on and on and on and, the, and as we talked, God kept talking the Holy Ghost got bigger and got bigger and got bigger and we understood one thing when we walked out of that room that it was by grace in the name of Jesus that we're to walk and we are to deal with everybody around us with one way and that is grace you deal with them in grace and mercy and truth and love and speak the truth in love and we deal with them and we walk in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you the one thing that's helped me so much in my life is we were talking there and, and I told him to begin with as we began to talk. I said, you know, I, I don't know if I can rightly answer that, but I'll try. I said, one thing that I know that's helped me more than anything and dealing with anybody is going into that mirror, amen, going and getting up in the morning, going looking in that mirror and look at that sack of flesh that I'm looking at, knowing, amen, what I was when God saved me, knowing what I still deal with and knowing that God hadn't wrote me off, amen, that God ain't give up upon me that at any given time that if I've confessed my sins God is still faithful and is just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteous that excites me amen that makes me happy amen to know that amen but I look through most of my life and I see where I've been hard on people and I've tried to beat them over the head with the Bible amen and I've tried to drive sheep like you do cattle amen but God showed me that you lead sheep amen it's a whole lot better. I can tell you there's been times in my life that I wouldn't have took it if somebody hadn't have poured it on me in love. I can tell you that. One of the greatest things that I've ever learned about dealing with other people that just keep on and on and on and on. It seems like there's no end and it drives you nuts as you look at your own self. And you ask yourself, how many times have I drove God nuts? How many times, amen, have I let Him down? How many times have I missed the mark? Then all of a sudden the leveling, all of a sudden the playing field kind of begins to get level. All of a sudden the high horse is gone. Then you can operate in love. You can operate in mercy. I can tell you, I'll take mercy, amen. It rejoices against iniquity, amen. I'll take mercy, amen. It'll rejoice against anything, any day of the week. I can tell you this, if it was not for mercy, we all die and go to hell. Do you understand that? It is nothing but by the grace and the mercy of God that I open my eyes today. It's nothing but the mercy and the grace of God that you and I are alive today. 
today and we're walking by the sheer mercy and grace of God Almighty. And who are we, amen, to not distribute grace and mercy? This Bible tells me that I am to let my light, amen, shine so that it might, men would see the good works and glorify my Father what's in heaven. I can assure you that if you walk in grace and walk in mercy and walk in truth, amen, and walk right down the middle of it, praise God, you'll find a way, you'll find the narrow path that Jesus talked about walking in grace. I can tell you one thing, the only reason you're saved today is simply by God's grace, amen. If you, There's nothing going to take you to heaven other than Jesus. And we're learning the longer we're in this thing, guess what? I don't get no glory. You don't either. It's not my glory, it's His glory. It's His salvation. It's His love. And it's His mercy. You, you, you know, uh, just to be honest with you, I, I've had so many things in my heart, in my mind that I've dealt with over the years. And I wish they were ripped out by the roots. I mean, it seemed like an onion God's been peeling for years and one of the things that's been the hardest for me is to love people, amen. I mean, love them like Jesus. I mean, to reach out with a compassion, amen. I always wanted to find, I could find anything wrong with anybody. I mean, I'm a cobweb seeker. I can find the cobwebs. I can find the cockroaches. I, I, but people don't need no help getting to hell. They're already headed there, amen. If they don't believe in Jesus, they're condemned already. It's not possible to preach a man into hell. He's already headed there if he does not believe. I've learned. In the last couple of weeks, God's dealt with my soul in, in a way that He's never dealt with it before. And I was telling the doctor down there today, I said, I'm finding a brand new love and compassion for lost people like I've never had. I've tried to love them within my own self, and I always found what was wrong with them. And I'd put my finger in the wound and just turn it around and around and around. Instead of taking the balm of Gilead of Jesus Christ and pouring it into the wound that we might heal the body of Christ, that she come together and walk in unity one more time, praise God. Instead of trying to conquer and divide, that's what Satan does. He conquers and he divides and he's looking for a way in. He's seeking about whom he may devour. He's a roaring lion and he's looking and he's trying to find a way to get in. Remember, I've told you so many times that Jesus said, The prince of this world, which is Satan, said, He cometh, but yet he hath nothing in me. I wonder, amen, what if we got to a place dead to ourselves, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ, that we were dead to everything, that when Satan comes, he finds nothing in us. Nothing in us. Many of us are carrying a saddle on our back and giving Satan a free ride. Many of us, Satan's hitchhiking every day of your life. Every day you're driving up the road, he's got his thumb out. And the very second you open that mouth to run somebody down or do anything, I stand before you guilty. I mean guilty as charged. You hear me? I am guilty. Amen. And I'm begging God to pull it out by the roots. Amen. Because I'm about as sick of it as God is. It ain't never helped nobody. Amen. The only thing that's ever helped anybody was the more excellent way. And that's love. Because it never failed. You hear me? Love never fails. Amen. When prophecies seek, when tongues cease, when all of it's over, one thing is still going to be alive and kicking. And that's love. Why? Because God is love. I'm talking about a red hot love. I'm talking about one that's shed abroad in the heart by the Holy Ghost. I mean a love that I can't even comprehend, amen. I can't even comprehend the problems I've had with OC and stuff, being neat, freaky and stuff, they tell me. I, I can't stand to get this or that, but I've watched women grab babies with a hockey running down their legs, and I marvel, and I think, that's what God done for me. April the 8th, 2.30 in the morning, I couldn't find him, amen. He came to me. He found me right where I was at. Do you know that the grace and the mercy of God is alive and well today, and it's still big and powerful enough to go into the bar and save the sodomite? sitting on the pew and take him to heaven praise God hallelujah we've come to a place I heard a man not too long ago he's talking about a man that wasn't quite what he ought to be and he said oh he said everything in me just wanted to run him over I broke and I said my God is this where the church has come that we believe that it's not possible to save him anymore 
And I said, God, I've been caught up in some of that talk. I've been caught up in some of that. God, help me, break me, mold me, do whatever we got to do, God. But pull this thing together right in the middle, amen. I don't know about you, but I've got lost loved ones, amen, that need Jesus. And I can't save them, amen. If I could, I'd have done done it. But I can't save them. I can't pay the price for them. No man comes except the Spirit of God draw him, amen. I don't want to grieve the Holy Ghost. I want to come together in love and walk in forgiveness and walk in love because that never fails, amen. If I'm guilty of anything before God from this day on in my life, I'd like to be guilty of just loving them too much. I'd like to be guilty of just giving them whatever they wanted. I'd rather stand before God, amen, guilty of just absolutely loving them. I want to tell you something that won't ever fail in your marriage. Whenever you have a disagreement, you just love them. You just rear back and just love them. Sometimes it's hard. It's not easy, amen. But the devil's looking for a way to get in. The Bible said, amen, if you go to, if you go to bed like that, it said it's going to hinder your prayers with you and your spouse, amen. Get that thing right and learn to walk in love. I, I'm learning this, amen. I like it a whole lot better. It's a whole lot more peaceful around the house, amen, when everybody's not pouting. Pout is out, God told me the other day. It's time, amen, that we dry it up in the name of Jesus, Corey. Man, you've got some work to do on ourselves, amen. Amen. And me too, Corey. We're working on it together, praise God. God, we're going to start holding one another accountable in the name of Jesus, amen. And we're going to learn to walk in love and love our wives like Christ loved the church. Amen, ladies. Amen. I got one with me. I got one with me. I'm talking about what will never fail. Can I tell you what God's told me from day one? If the horse is dead, dismount. I don't know about you, but it ain't been a-working. They ain't nothing been a-working, amen. People are lost. There don't seem to be anything drawing them anymore, amen. I wonder what would happen. The Bible said faith. faith well, I mean, you, you can't get off the ground. You can't even please God without faith. The book of Galatians, do you know how faith works? The Word of God says faith worketh by what? Love. The Bible said faith worketh by love. If you're having trouble with your faith, check your dipstick of love, amen. Something might be a little off. You might be running a little bit low. I can tell you what causes me to love. I can tell you the one thing that's helped me walk in grace, amen. And I'm learning this. I'm ashamed to tell you. I'm just now picking up on some of these truths, and I'm just now seeing the bigger picture, amen. And I've been learning that it's not all about Marvin, amen. It's all about a man named Jesus, and it's about people that's dying and going to hell. And I sit and I think about Mario. He's gone. He got run over and killed right up there not too long ago. And, and, and several weeks before that, we went in and prayed with him. We watched God change his life, and he left. And I thought, whoo, that was close. God, that was close. I thought, who else is walking around me that's fixing to breathe their last in a few days? Who else am I going to encounter tomorrow that's got a few days to live? I wonder, have I done anything to lead them to Jesus? I know what Jesus would do to them. He'd love them. He'd reach out to them, and he'd love them. Just like he did me, and just like he did you. But one of the things that's helping me the most in my life to understand when people fall, and people mess up, and people are human, and they're going to mess up. And this Bible says, I read it today, if a man says he has no sin, he's a liar. That's what the Word of God says. That's what it says, amen. That's hard to swallow, because I don't know about you, but I thought for a long time I was holy, and I'd made it. I really thought I had it all together, amen. But a lot of times I've gotten that way of thinking. And as uh, Clinton and said years ago, I, I thought, man, I've made it. And he said the clouds had rolled back and said it was further to the top than where he had come from. Yep, God rolled that onion, peel that thing back one more time. But the one thing that's helped me to walk in grace and mercy and humbles me real fast is whenever I think about the wrath of Almighty God. And I think how he saved me from that. And I think about how he came to my bedside. That April of 8, 2.30 in the morning, 2002, that I preached so much about. I can't even hardly remember my own birthday, but I remember that date. I'll never forget it. I, I, I couldn't find him. I couldn't get to him. I was in need of something. I didn't even know what I needed. And he came to me. He came to me with no rebuke. He came to me, and he abradeth not. He came to me, and the, the best way I've ever described what happened to me that night when I become born again I've told people this, it was like standing under a warm waterfall. And it was absolutely unconditional love that I had never felt in all of my life. I've never felt that anywhere else. And he just loved me. He just loved me. 
And that night I was translated into the, his, the kingdom of his dear son. That night I became an heir and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Amen. Most powerful thing that ever happened to me in all of my life. It absolutely derailed every bad thing in me and turned my life around. And I'm nowhere close to being perfect, but I can tell you I've been on a different road ever since. Amen. I can tell you that I'm free today from things that bothered me a year ago. Amen. And I thank God He's still dealing with me and I still belong to Him. I thank God the Holy Ghost of God is still real and He's dealing with my soul every day. But the one thing that helps me to walk in this grace and to walk in truth and to help old sinners just like me is when I realize how level the playing field really is. And I realize all the bad stuff that I find wrong with everybody else is probably twice as much of that wrong with me. And yet God reached down in all of my imperfections and He came right to that bedside. And the one thing that I still can't get my mind around is the grace and the mercy of God. How that time and time and time again, when I get caught up in whatever, and I have to go back to Him and say, God, it's me again. And His grace and His mercy is still as real to me then as it was April the 8th, 2.30 in the morning, 2002. And I realize that He's never turned me away. And I realize that God's been very long-suffering with me. Very long suffering with me. There was times he could have cut me off, but he didn't. And I think about the ones that are stumbling around us and ones that are falling. And I wonder how impatient that I've been with them. And how I got on the bandwagon and really got them run down really good. You know, Satan's a loving that. He's a using you. I told you the story about pulling the lever on the tractor that day and the hay conditioner fell. And when it failed, my dad stood up and he'd been up and just had crawled out from money. Satan was trying to use me as a small boy to kill my father. I felt so used that day. The very moment you jump and get down on his level, you're nothing but a tool of Satan. And he's using you to divide and conquer the body. Amen. He's using you to bring division to the body of Christ. I wonder what it hurt to just say good things about people. What about that scripture that says you float along through there and it says, let everything come out of your mouth be done to edify and to build up. I wonder how much I've conquered, divided, and put down. I found myself at a place praying. I said, God, you know where I've missed it. I said, God, you, you know the ones that I've hurt with this pulpit over the years. You know the ones where I've got in the flesh and I've just absolutely missed it. I said, God, I, I can't do nothing about tomorrow, but God, I'm asking you, Lord, to touch them. I'm asking you, God, to go back. I said, I told him today, I, I was coming up the road, and I just praying this. I said, God, you're the only one I know that can unscramble an egg. Now, whether you will or whether you won't, I don't know. But, God, I'm asking you, have mercy upon anybody that I've ever hurt. Amen. I don't want to be a hindrance to the body of Christ anymore. That's when it gets real to you, when you start digging down in there and finding things. You're reading the Word of God, and you're getting convicted. Amen. And God's a dealing. He's bringing you back to unity. To unify the church. I can tell you that Satan is out there. When you leave this church building, go out there. That's where the work begins. He's going to be standing on the side of the road all the way home with his thumb out. And you've got a choice to make. You can open that mouth or get on that bandwagon and stop and pick him up. And give him a short ride. But I promise you, as I've told you a hundred times from this pulpit, he's not looking to ride. He's looking to drive. You give him a few miles, he'll be, he's, he's slick and he's cunning. And the Bible said to give no place to him, none whatsoever, because he's looking to drive the car. Amen. Now, we've preached all of this, and I want you to read this with me, and we'll get the landing gear down and close. Mark, the second chapter. We've just laid a foundation for what we're about to read here. And again he entered into Capernaum, and after some days, and it was noised that he was in the house. I'd love for it to be noised in Clayton, Georgia, that Jesus Christ was in the house up there on the hill, wouldn't you? I'd love for that, amen, I'd love for that to be so. And straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no, not as much as about the door, and he preached the word unto them. And there came unto him, bringing one sick of palsy, which was born of four. 
And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of palsy lay. And when Jesus, say when Jesus, when Jesus saw their faith, look what happened here. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Turn with me to 1 John. I want to read you another scripture in 1 John. I'm talking about getting down to business. I'm talking about people. 1 John chapter 5, little John, 1 John chapter 5. I'm talking about people that are dying, going to hell. I'm talking about ones that are backslidden tonight, amen. They're in a backslidden condition, and they're messed up, amen. They're messed up from the floor up, and Satan's having a field day with them, and they're blinded by the enemy, and they can't see anything. And they're in need of somebody, that's you who are spiritual, to restore such a one, lest you be tempted, lest you be tried, unless you fall. You ought to take heed and restore that one, amen, and reach out with the hand of love. I wonder what kind of love it took to look at that sick of Paul to look at him in the state that he was and say, if I can just get him to Jesus, there's nothing I can do for him, but if I could just get him to Jesus, I can't get him to Jesus if the devil's in the back seat of my car or he's driving the car because we'll be headed in a different direction, amen. I'm talking about clearing the platform. I'm talking about bringing back to a zero and walking in love and snuffing out everything the devil's using to bring a reproach on the body of Christ that you and I might see somebody saved, that we might get them to Jesus in compassion. What kind of desperation would it take? I wonder if I would have pulled up to the church house and Jesus was in there and mighty miracles were being done and I had a man that was sick of palsy, crippled, laying on a stretcher. I wonder if I pulled up, amen, and Saul couldn't get in the door. I wonder what I say. Sorry, we can't get in. Maybe we'll try again. I wonder what desperation. Look at what faith, the action of faith done. It took him plumb to the roof, and they broke up the roof and ripped the roof off the thing because they said, if I can just get him to Jesus, everything will be all right. Everybody around me and you, if we can just get them to Jesus. Grandpa, if we could just get Grandpa Marley, if we could just get him to Jesus, everything will be all right. Maybe we've tried to correct them. Maybe we've tried too many things. How about we just try to get them to Jesus? And whatever it costs and whatever it takes, just get them to Jesus. If i got to lift them up, I wonder what kind of a pain it was to lift up a man on a stretcher up on a roof like that to get him on the rooftop. I wonder what kind of pain it was. I wonder what they had to go through to get the roof broke up. Amen. I'd say it wasn't easy. It wasn't a passive thing. But something drove them on the inside of them. Something drove them with compassion. Jesus, they said over there of Jesus, when he fed the 5,000 men, not counting the women and children, said that he was drove, he was driven, he was moved with compassion upon the multitudes and he fed them. There's multitudes around you all over the place today that are starving to death. There are people that are spiritually sick. They're sick of palsy. They're crippled. They're in the clutches of the enemy. Satan has blinded them. They can't see. I have a good friend I'm getting to know, and I've got a, a brand new love for him like I've never had. He just can't see it. He says, what is this born again? And he does it. And Chris, he don't even want to argue. He's not even argumentative. He just says, what is this born again? I don't, and, and I, he just can't see it. I thought, oh, my God, if we can just get him to Jesus, he'll see if you just get him saved, everything else will take care of itself. The Holy Ghost will teach him. He'll lead him. He'll guide him. God will take care of him. If we can just get him to Jesus. I wonder what happened if we laid everything down in the body of Christ and we all come together and say, you know what? Satan's pulled wool over our eyes for a long time. Not many people are getting to Jesus. How about we try to just get them to Jesus? How about we just try to love them? Listen to this. 1 John chapter 5. Verse, pick it up in verse 15. And if we know that He hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of Him. Listen to this. 
If any man, listen to this very carefully. If any man see his brother sin a sin, which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death that I do not say that he should pray for it. All unrighteous is sin, and there is a sin that's not unto death. Verse 16 again. If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life. You know, when I got saved, I had a whole slew of charges brought upon me that night. And I've often said this, I felt like I pled guilty, and Jesus gave me life. They need life, and they need it more abundantly. They need Jesus all around us. Our children, they need Jesus. Is that not cause enough to want to unite? Is that not cause enough to drive, let the compassion of Christ do you understand what the compassion of Christ done for me and you? Listen to this. I, I know you're about wanting to turn it off because the flesh don't like it, amen, because it's putting. I want to tell you something about a good doctor, amen. I was down there at one today. He's digging an ingrown toenail out. He wouldn't have been no doctor at all if when he found the thing in there and found the other end of it, if he'd have just put a Band-Aid on it and said, I don't want to hurt you and send you home, amen. But he kept poking and he prodded in that thing and he pulled it out by the roots. He pulled it out by the roots. And I thank God for him because now I can walk again. Straighten up a little bit. You think about the compassion of Jesus Christ, what it done for me and you. It drove the Son of God. And I, I wish I had better terminology. Maybe I ought to study out a little more, I could tell you. But I always say the diamond-clustered balconies of heaven. I can't imagine uh, streets paved with gold. I can't imagine how, how awesome it must be in heaven. I mean, it's beyond any, any comprehension of mine that I'll ever have in this life, and I know that. But Jesus left all of that. And His compassion drove Him to a stinking cave in Bethlehem where He was born, wrapped up in swaddling clothes put him on a donkey, and he rolled into the streets of Jerusalem, put him on a whipping post, and he was beat with a Roman cat of nine tails. Thirty-nine stripes considered maximum by Roman law. It was for me. It was for my healing. It was for you. And he fell down into the garden, you remember? He said, God, if it be possible, take this cup, but if not, nevertheless, thy will be done. You know what was in that cup? It was mine in your wrath of God. And he drank every drop of it. His compassion as he looked 2,000 something years later and he saw Marvin Reeve was going to come to faith in Jesus Christ and he went on and went through an excruciating pain. His compassion, his compassion drove him all the way to Calvary as he was beaten, smitten of God, the Bible says. And he died on Calvary. When at any given time he could have spoke one word and legions of angels would have came and fought for him and it had been over. And he told those Roman soldiers over there that fell to the ground trembling in terror, said, no man takes my life. He said, I lay it down. God incarnated in the flesh. The one that spoke everything into existence walked among us. What an amazing thought. Why would he do such a thing? Compassion and lost souls. Well, why would I get in the altar? Why would I want to deal with the impurity? Why would I want to deal with these things like that? I can tell you why. Compassion. Compassion. For I can be an empty, anointed vessel of God. Do you know you could say hello to someone, and if it's anointed of the Holy Ghost of God, it can bring salvation. We err not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. I want to tell you what my problem has been all of my life. It's been me. It's been that thing I've been looking at in the mirror. It's getting him under subjection to God. It's getting him good and dead and bringing him back to a place and reminding me over and over and over. You remember Moses over there? He, or, I mean, uh, Abraham kept saying, well, we'll do this. I'll have a son here. We'll do this. We just consider this one. 
God never rebuked him. He said, no. He said, I promise you, you're going to have a son. He just kept telling him. All my life, God just been telling me. Tell him, it's a more excellent way. It's a more excellent way. Die, go through Romans 6, find Romans 8, walk in newness of life, walk in the Spirit of God. Amen. Let the bomb of Gilead follow you all the days of your life. The very moment you pull the car over and let that devil in, pick him up for just a few minutes. What time have you lost? What time have you lost? Do you understand tonight? Does it bother you? Let me ask you this. I know we're tired. This, this will tell us where we're at tonight. This will tell us exactly where we're at. Does it bother anybody in here tonight? Does it bother you any of the least that there's somebody right now on a ventilator and they do not know Jesus and they're about to die and they're going to open their eyes in hell and they're going to spend an eternity there and they're never coming out. They're never coming out. They're never coming out. Does that bother us tonight? I say it's a good cause for unity. It's a good cause just to get honest before God and say, God, use me. I don't want to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation. I want to be a walking epistle of Jesus, amen. I know we, we've made fun of some of that in the past, amen, but I'm serious today. I'm serious. I'm telling you, I want to be a vessel unto God, anointed. I want to challenge you tonight. I reached a place in Monday night's prayer meeting that I have never reached by this way. I found a place that I prayed in the Spirit and prayed with a true heart before God Almighty. And it wasn't no vain repetition like it's been so many times. I began to ask God. I said, God, will you please give me? And I was begging the Lord with all of my heart. I said, God, will you please give me an anointing that I can minister one-on-one. -on -one. And not just minister, but the power of the Holy Ghost to win them to Jesus. To see them saved and born again. Not just in the pulpit. God's always anointed for that. He's, he's called me. That's the gifts and callings about repentance. I said, God, give me that ministry of reconciliation. God, give me the, you know, I'm begging you, Lord. I said, God, if you don't give it to me, I won't have it. I, I want the anointing of God. Please, God, give me this gift that I may go and minister to somebody that's fallen, that I may help them in love, stand back up, and give me that ministry of reconciliation. God, I'll take the junkyard. I'll work the junkyard. Whatever I must do, God, let me win souls for Jesus Christ at all costs. I've never had a love and a compassion like I've had in the last couple of weeks for lost people. Never. Never have I had it. But that's what it's going to take. And I'm learning something. God's been doing something in this church for years. He's bringing it together. I don't know about you, I'm no Bible scholar, but my overall assessment, I'm not sure the church is ready to go home by some of the things that I see. But I want us to make no mistake about this. Don't err not knowing the Scriptures nor the power. Don't err not knowing the power of God. The Holy Ghost of God can go around this world in a millionth of a second and have everybody in the world on their face begging God for repentance. And then Jesus step out. Make no mistake about the power of God in thinking we've got lots and lots of time because I'm not so sure that we do. I told the Lord today, I said, Father, I can't do anything about all the wasted years. And I posted something on Facebook today about the windshield. That windshield's always bigger than the rearview mirror. I said, I can't do anything about the past. I can't do anything about where I've messed up. But I said, God, and, and I told him, I was coming up the road today. The Spirit of God had been moving on us. We were all broken. I was weeping. And I, I told God, I said, God, I don't know where I've messed up. I don't know what I've done. I said, but God, I don't know how many days I got left. I don't know how many days. I don't. You know the answer to that. I don't know what, the, what they are. I said, God, help me get it right. Help me. Help me, Lord, to live out those days in the power of your Spirit. Help me, God, to take as many people as I can from here on out. Help me be looking for a place to witness. Looking for a place, not just to witness. Not just to go in and give them a Bible verse. I'm talking about reach in and pull them out of the fire. I mean reach in with anointing of God. Even Billy Graham recognized and said this. 
He said he understood he was not a good preacher, but God had given him an anointing for altar calls. I said, God, give me an anointing to witness one-on-one. -on -one. Put me in places. Today I was in two places after I prayed that with all sincerity. I was in two places today where I was able to witness. And me and those grown men in both places stood there and we wept before God. As we all walked off and said, I needed to hear that. You don't know how much I needed to hear that. And I got in my truck and I said, thank you, God. I want to help. I want to mend. I want to help the body of Christ. I don't want to be a hindrance. I want to be ready. God, grab this tongue and pull it out by the roots. Cut this pointing finger off of me, God. Let me be a piece of driftwood floating on the sea and you take me where you want, God. Let me be guilty of one thing, of just loving them, God. I can't do it within my own self. I need that love of God that's shed abroad in the heart by the Holy Ghost is the only thing that will get the job done. Now, what about you? You ready to sign up? Are you ready to get busy with the Lord? Amen. The journey of a thousand miles will begin with a single footstep. It's up to you. You're the only person in the world that can do anything about it. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I've done everything I know to do, Father, to deliver what you've put on my heart tonight. And God, I, I had no intentions of hurting anybody, God. I didn't want to do anything tonight but to build up and lift up the kingdom of God. I pray, God, that you touch us, Lord, the ones that have been touched by tonight. God, you know who they are. I pray that you'd help us, God, that we would minister grace to the hearers, that we let everything be done to the edifying of the body of Christ. Father, that uh, as we pray today, God, help us find the weak places. Help us find those weak links. God, show them to us and let us go to them and minister, God, and patch them and prop them up. God, let us go and minister to them and help them along, Father. I'm asking you, God, for healing to the body of Christ tonight. Father, help us in the name of Jesus to get our minds wrapped around you, to get our hearts wrapped around Jesus, that we may flow in the compassion of Jesus Christ, that we may have a compassion, God, like we've never had. God, give us an anointing tonight, I pray, that we may win souls. You said in your word that whoever wins souls is wise. God, we want to be wise. I want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant, God. I want to be guilty as charged, God of loving, Father, with all the love of Christ, Father. I want to walk in those sandals, Father, as humble as I can, Father. I'm asking you tonight, God, that you'd help us. I'm asking you tonight, Father, that you would unite us in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that we wouldn't be picking up no hitchhikers as far as the devil's concerned. I don't want him driving my car anymore, Lord. What a tragedy. People are dying and going to hell. Help us get serious about it and know we've got a few days left here. And let us be about your business. And God, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Father, we love you. We thank you, God, for saving us. God, we thank you tonight for having mercy on old wretches like us, Father. We thank you for that, God. Help us to forever know that we're all zeros. But help us form a net in this body of Christ that we may catch a lot of fish. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.